Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am hopping on talking about um, singles. I want to do some singles yarn. Um, I have not done, of course when you're spinning, um, you're always spinning singles, but I typically always ply my singles. Um, I did do a previous video, I'll try to remember to link it, where I did some Angora in a single yarn. Um, but today I'm gonna try some different uh, different wool in um, a singles yarn and I am going to do it on my Spinolution Mon Monarch and I am not um, a technical spinner per se there are many 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 more people out there spinning that are much better at it than I am much more technical um, I learn new things all the time in my spinning journey, uh, and I am just a very, um, I lean towards more of the artistic side of the spinning rather than the technical side of it. So, um, this will be a fun video, and I will give you some tips and hints as I go along. I have a specific, um, a specific weight of yarn that I would like to spin in a single and then I'll show you how I finish it off all of this I have gleaned from other spinners um, and books and things like that so first let's talk about um, the yarn I'm gonna use this is um, from crafty housewife yarns I almost took my finger off yesterday with a with my uh, my food processor um, I grabbed for something and got the blade so um, this is from crafty housewife yards and it is their I think it's the October this is the braid of the month club I used to get these all the time and then I got overwhelmed um, I may go back to to getting them again at some point I get overwhelmed because I have so much of my own stuff to spin I am actually embarrassed to even admit this, but in my office right now, I probably have, and I do, I'll, I preface what I'm gonna say with this, I do sell my Angora fiber um, just by the ounce, so I always try to keep some of that kind of off to the side um, as I am grooming and stuff and um, don't turn everything into yarn. So I have something available if I do um, have a sale or whatever, if I have a show. Um, so I do have some Angora set aside, but right now I was just in my office looking for stuff to do this video and I have a massive amount of spinning to do with my Angora. Um, that is, I've been kind of finishing up the garden and finishing up all the summer stuff and um, we had a really busy summer and lots of stuff and lots of additions to the farm. And so my goal this fall and winter is to take some time just to sit and spin up all the Angora I have and work with it. Um, I have a project that I am toying with right now. I, I, I saw this um, and I won't go into this too deeply. Um, it's a project that I saw and somebody had made something out of Angora and I am researching to figure out how in the world she did it. So stay tuned, that might be a video of its own if I can figure out how um, it was done. But back to the spinning. Um, so this is the Crafty Housewife Yarns Braid of the Month Club um, and this is October's and it's called Gourds, which is fitting. Um, it has some beautiful colors. This isn't colors that I typically gravitate towards um, with the peach, but when you add in the green and the orange, um, I really love this. Um, and it is Cheviot wool, I think I pronounced that correctly, which is a Scottish breed, UK, Scotland. Um, and this is USA Small Farm Fibers. Erin um, at Crafty Housewife Yarn does a lot of work with a lot of different farmers, myself included, um, when she puts, puts together her braids or her boxes or yarns. Um, it is always from a small farm USA made um, 
wool. So, and I'm not sure, I should have checked before I did this video. I don't know if she has any of these left available. A lot of times she will. Um, so you can go, I will put the link down below um, for that. So that's what we're gonna be single plying today. Also, I have um, this magazine which is the ply magazine and it is a singles issue. So the whole issue is singles. This is um, issue 11, so it's uh, winter of 2015. I purchased this recently within the last six months um, to a year I purchased this. So even though it's from 2015, they still had it when I got it. Um, yeah, I'm almost certain I've gotten this within the last six months. So, uh, Ply Magazine, you can get online and check it out. Um, but it goes through making singles. Um, it's a really, and I haven't read all the articles yet, but it talks about finishing and how to do it and getting the twist. All that technical stuff that I probably won't get too deep into um, because... Um, I'm not a technical spinner. I also, I will put a link to a couple of videos that I did watch where they do get into the, to the technical side of things. Um, one of them is the Tiny Fiber Studio, I think, and she has a really great video on singles. I will link that down below, and there was a second one that I was kind of peeking at, um, where they go into the technical side of the angle of your twist on signal singles, um, and different ratios on your wheel and things like that. So I will link those below. The one thing I am gonna pull out is my um, my control card. <clears throat> I've talked about these before in another video too. I want to do, so most of my spinning is done. Now I love, um, I like consistent yarn. I love yarn with little slubs and bits and bobbles in it. I just, I love it. I I don't need consistent yarn in my life. Um, if I want that, I'll go buy it from someone else that enjoys making that. So most of my stuff, it's consistent, um, but like this is one of the Angora bobbins I have sitting here, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell. It's fairly consistent, but there are every now and then there's a slub. I can see one and this is pretty thin spun, but you can see where I got a little bit thick there. Um, it was just part of the uh, fiber that I was spinning. So most of my Angora, I do spin thicker than what a lot of people would spin Angora, but it's never, um, it's never like thick, thick, bulky um, with Angora. And so I'm trying to see, this would be, like a DK weight, um, if I were going to, um, like a sporter DK is what I make most of my Angora. A lot of people will do though their Angora more of a fingering weight once it's plied. So mine's just a tad bit thicker because I do a lot of things with my Angora. I make products and things like that. I make earrings. Um, and so I want a little bit more um, heft to most of mine. I do hats with it. And I when I started doing the Angora and got connected with another Angora person and started sending her all my yarn, she wanted it a little bit heavier. And so that's what I do. So for the most part though, I do not spin. And I get very much in a pattern of I'm spinning Angora all the time and so that's what I spin. So I don't spin bulky weight yarns per se. Um, every now and then I do have some fun art yarns that I can think of right now that are in my office, but they're more thick and thin um, with texture to them and stuff like that. So I have to really pay attention and work hard to get, I am hoping to get like an Aran weight yarn. And so that's why I have this. I'm gonna use it to double check that I'm kind of consistent throughout. I do want a thicker weight. Um, so there's that, the fiber. I have my Monarch in front of me, and while I'm doing this video, I'm actually gonna, um, I'm gonna pause this and flip it down so I can show you something real quick. Um, I wanna show you, I have my eight ounce bobbin um, head on my wheel right now, and I'm gonna switch to my 16 ounce. So I wanna show you how quick and easy it is to do that um, on the Spinolution Monarch. Um, and so, 
Let me pause this real quick and I will show you. Okay guys, I am going to just um, lift the band off. This is the drive band. And I'm going to untwist this. Oh, I have it twisted on really tight too, there we go. Um, and so these, the whole, this whole head here is gonna come right off. I'm going to undo this, put the drive band in the back, pull that right off. That's my eight ounce. And I have my 16 ounce line here. And um, these little screws and stuff, each, each one of these has its own. So they stay with um, the head. So let me get this one off. I guess I should have done this before I started filming. And I am just gonna slide this in. And screw this on. And I have shifted to my 16 ounce just like that. And then I'm going to reset my, my drive band back on. And that's it. So let me uh, pause this and we'll shift over. Okay. I want an angle here where you guys can see what I'm doing. I am all set here. These bobbins are so huge. When I, and this isn't even the biggest bobbin you can get. But when I compare them to the other, you know, like the four ounce ones that I've become used to over the years before getting my Monarch, they're just huge. So I'm going to undo the braid. I started at the wrong end. Um, And I, um, some of the, the videos I watched did talk about um, staple length will make a difference. There we go. And um, she, the one video I watched, she was doing a merino, which is a shorter staple length. And she talked about how that, um, how that made a difference in how you spin. Um, I am going to just separate these, I think, um, and work with half of it for now. And just kind of fluff out um, this. Colors are beautiful, show up even nicer. So I've got my leader on here, and let's, can you see that? I think so. Let me move you just a touch. So I'm gonna get this started, and I do have this on a high, um, let me do this first, um, on a high, uh, ratio a high gear up here. Oops. It'd help if everything was snapped in place. These are magnetic, so when you uh, pop them in, you hear them snap. And that was way too thick. All right, so I am going to do just a bit here and it always looks I was thinking this when I watched um, some of the videos I watched when you're looking at it on the screen like when I'm looking at my camera screen here um, it looks so much thinner than what it is but in actuality it is um, it is thicker in real real life in person and again, I need to make sure that I am spinning consistently because I do want this to be somewhat consistent. Um, and I want to check my gauge. Did I lose my gauge? No. 
Um, I'm thinking this might be a little too thin yet. Um, just a touch. I've got. I have not had this uh, bobbin on in a while, so I've got a squeak somewhere. So that is almost what I want. It's hard to tell because of the colors, but it's right here. And that's my air and weight. And so I'm doing what I want there. And this does have, I'm going to play with the ratios a little bit too. Um, again, I am not going to get into the technical uh, side of things because I am not, I don't feel comfortable enough talking about the, the deep technical side of spinning. I just, it's not something, spinning is much more of an art form for me than anything. And so I am just kind of doing what feels right and what looks right and what I want it to look like. I am just pulling through, trying to stay consistent. And um, now she talked about um, the one talked about if she gets a slub. Sometimes when you're, and I don't think you can see this, this is, I have to check my, there's a slub right here. She um, talked about, that might, there. Um, she talked about, she will stop and pull the slubs out. She does not like the slubs. And I think with this kind of yarn, I am also gonna, stop and pull it out um, these are the things so that's a slub and it will create a little bump in your yarn and I do want this to be a bit more consistent um, she did also talk about another thing again I'm gleaning from others um, your joins need to be really really good joins and to get good joins you want to have both ends fluffed up and um, connect so that your joints are nice and strong in singles, which makes sense because they're not gonna be plied back on anything. So it's just is what it is. So I am going to move you up. I am going to work on this yarn today um, and then hopefully have it have it done today and then I will move we'll move into taking it off the wheel and um, washing it there's a couple of different techniques that you can use to wash it in order to get it to um, to stay true to what you want it to look like so hold tight I will be right back but this will be a little bit later
Okay guys, I have um, gotten the yarn done and I am going to wash it. I want to show you what it looked like. It's got a lot of uh, energy to it. Um, so that is the single. I apologize, the color isn't great here in the bathroom. I will have some pictures on Instagram. Um, I didn't drag all my lighting equipment in here. So what I'm going to do, there's a couple different routes to take with this. Um, one of them is to um, do hot and then cold um, and which essentially you're f almost felting the yarn just slightly um, it's not a true felt because felting is actually soap heat and agitation and so when you flip back um, hot and cold it um, it does felt it slightly. So I'm going to do that and I'm also going to do some thwacking. I'll show that on video. So um, let's get this started. And I'm going to use a uh, pretty warm water. should have had this done before I started this.
up and um, yeah it is still wet so I need to dry it I'm gonna hang it um, a couple of the the things that I looked at said that they um, weighed it or they don't weight it down so when you hang it you hang it with something weighted on it to to help it also um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that I do think I'm gonna go thwack it a couple more times outside I did show that in the video it's still got some twist and stuff to it but I think the weight of it once it hangs and I apologize the color is not picking up because it's so dreary out today. <laughs> I even went outside and did some photos and I had to adjust my camera to get the right color on. So um, if you want to see those, I'll put those on Instagram, the pictures of it. It is a really beautiful yarn and I'm really happy with it. Um, I think I'm going to play with singles a little bit. Uh, so yeah, to set it, you simply um, either do, you can do a couple different options. Like I said, you can do a hot, cold, hot, cold um, bath and it felts it just slightly. It does not felt it together because you're not adding in that agitation and felting takes soap, hot, and agitation all at the same time to, in order to really felt things. So you shouldn't have any problems with that if you switch from hot to cold. Um, and the other one was just uh, another option and I kind of did all three of them, um, was just really warm water, let it soak, and then uh, just thwack it. So um, yeah. So I got a beautiful yarn and I want to do some more. I would like to do some thicker stuff even and maybe some thick and thin singles. So uh, something for you guys to try if you're interested. And yeah, it turned out great. And remember to go look at my Instagram page um, to see the picture that I took of it outside so you can get an idea of what the color is. Again, this is Crafty Housewife's Yarn uh, Braid of the Month Club. They have all kinds of month clubs with Yarn of the Month and Braid of the Month. Um, so head on over there to check it out if you want to get one of these. Again, I don't know if she still has any of these in stock, um, but they have lots to choose from. So thank you for stopping by today, and I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, and I hope you got to create something. Bye.